Hello everyone. So it's Sunday, and uh, the store's not open on Sunday, uh, but at the moment I have boxer cakes here, and it's really not fair for me to be cooped up from Saturday uh, night when I leave for the day uh, until Monday morning when I get here, and especially with it being um, I live in Northern Ontario, so it's really really snowy here, and the weather can turn in an instant. Um, I always fear that I'm not going to be able to get back to them on a Monday. Um, so, I figured while I was here and while I was running around and having a grand old time making a mess at the shop, I was going to touch on a subject that um, was brought up to me the other day um, about um, oral hygiene. Now, most dog owners don't brush their dog's teeth, and a lot of it boils down to not having the time, not having the willpower, <laughs> not having the inclination. Um, but uh, I'm going to start off by saying, first and foremost, that if you're, you want your dog to have clean teeth, then you need to brush your dog's teeth. So I would suggest going out and getting one of these. This is a toothbrush. No, you don't have to have the nice fancy ones. Uh, this brush actually has bristles that face this way, in the opposite direction, and that's at straight on. Um, so it's a little less work for you to actually brush all the way around your dog's teeth. Um, there's also a brush on the a brush on the back side, um, which will, you know, kind of get everything else. Um, so a toothbrush and some toothpaste is gonna go a long way. Um, I definitely suggest for dogs who have um, brachycephalic faces, so they're, they've got squishy faces, or um, dogs who genetically have bad teeth, so all of their hairless breeds. Um, small breed dogs like Chihuahuas, um, they are predisposed almost to have really nasty teeth. Um, so if you want to save on the vet bills of having your dog's teeth removed or repaired or having dentistry done regularly, brushing your dog's teeth is definitely the best way to go. Now, if you're like the rest of canine ownership population, uh, most people don't see the practicality of brushing their dog's teeth. Um, aside from the fact that your dog needs his teeth to chew, um, mind you, I can dog not have any teeth that chew just fine. Um, if your dog has an infection in its mouth or uh, rotting teeth, that can actually affect their entire body. Because what happens is it gets swallowed. So it goes into the stomach, it'll go into the bloodstream, it can wreak havoc over your entire dog's body um, simply due to the fact that his mouth is disgusting. Um, so brushing your dog's teeth is always something that I recommend to people. Now, if you have more time than money, um, that is that is definitely a, a, a good way to start. Uh, people who have a little bit more money than time, um, as weird as it sounds, feeding your dog uh, a raw food diet or a canned food diet actually helps them to have better oral health, especially with the raw food because you can get raw food with bones in them where they actually have to chew. Um, it will help to uh, the abrasion from the bones will actually help to remove the plaque from your dog's teeth. Now, a lot of people will say that feeding a wet food is not as good as feeding a hard food like kibble uh, because the abrasion from the kibble will do the same thing. And honestly, unless you get very specific veterinary food like the TD diet, um, which I believe is from Hills, I could be wrong, I don't know if Hills or Science. Those are the same ones. Medi-Cal. There we go. <laughs> um, the kibble is actually designed to be, um, it's hard to explain, the kibble has to be punctured all the way through before the kibble will break into pieces. Um, and then what that does is, because it stays together longer, it, it kind of rubs up against the teeth more. Now, every other kind of food on the market really isn't going to do that. Not only is kibble extremely uh, weak as far as, as 
strength bone needed to break it. If you have a dog who's probably stepped on a cable and you see how easily it shatters. Aside from that, most dogs don't chew their food. Most dogs just swallow it down. So, seeing that, oh, well, my dog eats kibble so it doesn't need to have his teeth brushed is really not going very far. If, uh, if you're looking for an option that doesn't involve brushing your dog's teeth, but still helps to improve his oral health, uh, there's so many things out there that I can recommend. Uh, one of them is um, a water additive. This one is by Nylabol. Um, I haven't actually tried this particular one, but I have tried other ones, and they work with varying success. If your dog has very little plaque on his teeth, and you use other things to help keep the plaque down, then these actually work really well. But if you think that just by plopping some of this in the water dish is going to solve all the problems, it's probably not. But this is a good place to start. Um, another product that I absolutely love are these guys. Um, they are from the Paragon Company, and they are a potato-based chew. Now, most bones that I give my dogs at least, um, for example, the blue bone. Um, <laughs> yes, Daisy, I said blue bone. These are one of Daisy's favorites, actually. Um, there really is not much to them. Like, this is the bone that they recommend for a dog up to 25 pounds, I believe. Uh, this bag of regular size blue bone is ideal for dogs 25 pounds and above. Now, it doesn't say to what extent, but I wouldn't say anything really more than 25 pounds. This isn't a very big bone. Um, the other thing that I have, the other problem that I have with it is that Daisy can get through one of these in about two or three minutes. Um, and that's really not going to provide a lot of friction and a lot of abrasion for your dog's teeth if you're if you're hoping that this is going to clean his teeth. So they are a good snack, and by all means, it's not going to hurt your dog to give you one. By the way, do you want one? Else? No, actually, you already have one. I'll give you an Albert first, okay? Um, I usually just give those kinds of treats to my dogs. Um, if I have to put Daisy in her kennel, if I, if I know a particularly aggressive dog is coming in or it's getting really hairy in here um, and she's under people's feet, then I'll ask her to go on her bed and, and she knows that she'll get a bone. Um, why I prefer these ones, actually, is because um, they actually last longer and that's kind of what you're looking for with a treat. Uh, if you're looking for something to um, brush your dog's teeth, really, you're also going to want to look for something that doesn't have a lot of meat ingredients in it. You want something that's going to be pretty easy for your dog's mouth to do a lot of the um, work. Now, dogs don't have enzymes in their saliva to digest food, which is why something potato-based is excellent, because it'll actually kind of dissolve into the spit itself. So there's really nothing left over. There you go, Dave. Have your alligator. And like I said, one of these, one of these blue bones will last her maybe two or three minutes. Uh, one of these will actually last her closer to a half an hour. And it's really like if you compare the sizing, um, it's really not that different. These are hollow to boot, um, but the just the weight itself is enough for for the di like the fact that they weigh almost the same and this lasts about two minutes and this lasts about 30 is huge for me. So if you're looking to give your dog something, um, I definitely suggest um, the Paragon Dental Treats. Now this is the Hedgehog. There's also the Alligator, which I just gave Daisy. Uh, there's also a toothbrush shaped one. Now I don't think the toothbrush comes in the larger sizes, but I have seen the toothbrushes in uh, 50 count bags. And you're supposed to give your dog one every day, if you read the bag. A friend of mine actually started giving her dog um, these guys once every two or three days. I'd say she, I believe she told me about two or three times a week. And her bath and hound, oh my god, it was absolutely raunchy. <laughs> her, her breath was just disgusting. So she started giving Bella one of these every uh every few days, and her breath improved quite dramatically. Uh, she also noticed that there was a lot less 
black and gunkiness going on in her mouth, which is fabulous. Now, if you want something for your dog that's not food based, then I suggest finding a toy, um, something like this. This is by Heart, obviously, it says right on top. This one's called the Chew and Clean, and it's actually ribbed. Um, so when your dog chews on it, the ribbing goes between their teeth and it's supposed to help to kind of take things off. Now this one is a bacon flavor. I couldn't tell you if it was bacon flavored. I haven't tasted it, but it does smell like bacon, if that makes any difference. Um, and if your dog is a toy dog, then stuff like that is great. Now the only problem is that most dogs aren't going to, like the, tr the toy's not going to get through the whole mouth, right? It's this, this size and, you know, whatever. Um, but definitely is not going to harm your dog's mouth. Actually, I suggest to people, if their dogs do enjoy playing with toys, that you get things um, like this so that your dogs can chew on something and, and it will help to improve their oral health. Now, not every toy is going to do that. I know they say that Kongs are supposed to be really good for improving your dog's oral health, but a normal Kong is not going to provide that kind of abrasion because it's flat and your dog's just going to chew it up and down. It will help their jaw muscles, but aside from that, it's not going to do very much. Now, there are things you're going to want to avoid if your dog has really nasty, nasty breath and nasty teeth. The first are those stringy, gross dog toys that you find with the knots in the end. A lot of them will say, like, loss and play or whatever. Um, those really aren't a safe toy for your dog to play with. If they swallow one of those strings, it is going to mean a lot of pain if your dog gets stuck in their intestines. Uh, not to mention you don't want to encourage your dog to be eating these kinds of toys. Um, they're really just not something that I suggest to people. Uh, another thing that you really shouldn't be giving your dog if they have really bad, bad teeth are soft, plushy toys. Uh, the reason being that they soak up all of the germs and stuff in your dog's mouth. And then they play with it again, and then the germs get reinvited into their mouth, and it just does not, it doesn't um, encourage good oral hygiene. Uh, if your dog does like to play with those kinds of toys and has really bad teeth, then I suggest buying toys that are easily washable. That way, you know, at the end of the day, you can throw the toys in the laundry hamper and pull out a new toy, and you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Aside from that, there's really not much else you can do. Aside from paying for dentistry, um, which can get very expensive, they actually anesthetize your dog and will clean every tooth, kind of like when you go to the dentist. Um, it, it's quite the procedure, and it will get to all the spots. They'll be able to tell you what exactly is going on in your dog's mouth. Uh, but I figured that I would go over some alternatives uh, hopefully you won't have to get to that point um, of a, a veterinarian dentistry kind of thing. Uh, so if you have any questions, let me know. And um, I hope you learned something. Give your dog a cool toy to play with because you just like good treats, right? Uh, leave comments below. And if you have anything that you'd like me to touch up on in a video, uh, send me an email.